this is going to be a basically a video highlighting a selection of tools that I use the most with the power hammer. Um, I'll give a brief explanation about the tools and then go into a short demonstration on how I use them. With this, this is three different types of flatters. I'm really only going to use this one but because this one is the one I use the most. Um, it's got a large surface area. I think it's four and a half by four and a half. And you can use either side. I probably use this side the most. Anyway, so if you want to make this tool, imagine a piece that's four inches round or five inches round, but taller. And you just basically draw a line. It can be one with a, a hole in the middle or a solid piece. And you put this in your bandsaw, you can weld a shank to it and then cut the piece here and you have it. Radius the edges, weld the handle to it. Uh, the second one is just a smaller version, uh, different handle and at an angle. The third one being just a, a small half round which is pretty useful too. And that's very easy to make this tool. You just take your whatever diameter you want and cut it down the middle and weld the handle to it. So I'll go ahead and give a quick demo on using the big flat. So if, if you want to have a piece, especially with tool making, where you don't want the die marks showing the taper, that's a great tool to use. You can see it covers a lot of area. And you saw me working opposite sides, doing this side, flipping it, working that side. I do that because the bottom die forges more. So if you want a more even foraging, you need to work one side, flip it over to the other side, and then so on. And that's it for that tool. This will show using the little half round. I probably use this at least at least every day, many times a day, and to um, mainly for straightening. And it works good when it's paired with some half rounds. And it's good to have several sizes of half rounds that you can use. I don't like to weld them in to a fixed position. It's better to keep them kind of free floating so you can increase or decrease the distance between them if you need to straighten the piece. Um, again, these are all just mild steel. It's, it's, they don't, it doesn't really even need to be tool steel, especially these. So I'm going to go ahead and bend that piece purposely and then straighten it using these three tools under the power hammer. And that's an easy way to straighten material, whether it be 
two inch diameter bar or three quarter inch bar like this one is. And you can move the half rounds closer together or further apart or you can use a bigger flatter if needed to set on top of it while you straighten it. This is a block I use a lot for various things but mainly to make tongs and you can do this entire working part of the tong with just one block. Um, it's probably best also to have many different sizes in this, whether it be square blocks or a longer rectangle or a little bit thicker. You can radius the edges differently. Um, in the fire right now there's a piece of 5 eighths round that I will show how to make the working part of a tong not to perfection but just basically roughing it out using this one block. As you saw, it's, it's it's just a rough version, but you lay it over that way on the block, you move it to that, and then do that. After that, you could develop it, perfect it, and draw the rain out, and you've got a finished tongue using only one tool. Uh, this is a side set. It's more or less a quarter round, and you can see how it is, is high up on this side and slopes down, and then has a pretty big curve to it at the bottom. Um, you can use it to make offsets or if you want to start the the shank for a, a hardy tool it's also good for that and uh, I'm just going to show an, an offset using it with a piece of three-quarter inch square bar. see it was useful not only to create the offset but you can use it and lay it on its side to use the pieces of flatter to even everything out. This is a nice tool for uh, doing a mid bar split. Pretty easy to make. Uh, you don't even really have to forge that. You can get your grinder with the grinding wheel, turn it up on edge, grind this, grind this, and then create the, the cutting edge. And it would be best to have a few different lengths of these, maybe one at two inches, one at three, one at four. And uh, like I said, it's great to do a mid-bar split. There's a little work before you, you start using the tool. Uh, you have to index the square or round bar that you're gonna cut 
using this tool. So let's go ahead and do it. And there it is, mid-bar split. You might have to get in there with your hand tool and chisel and clean up the cut a little bit, but it's pretty fast otherwise. Okay, this is a one inch ball tool. And um, again, a nice tool to have from a three eighths ball up to a three inch ball. And uh, it's, there's a little trick, I don't want to say a trick, but it's, you don't just stick a piece of steel in a ball tool and expect it to work. You, you gotta do a little finagling to make the ball come out right. After I have the ball, I thought I would use this kind of aggressive fullering tool to spread the ball out. There's the ball. You usually have that little piece on the end there that you need to get rid of, that little point. And here's the polaring tool. Make some real nice texture marks using this tool. Okay, half rounds, um, half round spring tools, uh, very useful to have. Definitely best to have these from uh, half inch all the way up to, let's say, three inch. Um, really easy to make. Just take the half round or the diameter that you want and stand a piece up, mark it. Put it in the bandsaw, saw it in half, and weld the handle to it. Uh, most of the handles that I use for these are uh, 3 16 by 1, just 1018 or, or mild steel. And most of the drawing tools that I use like this are also mild steel that I just water quench. Um, these are about seven years old, and I'm still using them. So um, I will show using a piece of one inch square bar how to draw out with these, and then also how to not necessarily neck down a piece, but to kind of fuller a piece on all four sides and create facets on it.
piece being drawn out. And here's one you can make it the fastest. So As you can see, it makes a, a real nice, clean transition if, if that's what you're looking for. A picket on a railing where you have the bar in the, not a railing, but a fence or a gate. Bar that's part of the gate and then the, the finial or whatever you'd call it. This is a, a fern leaf making tool. Um, basically two, two fullers with a notch in them a v-notch to make the vein and um, some stop blocks in here uh, so you don't shear the piece of flat bar in half while you're making the the texture of the fern leaf um, all mild steel didn't really need to be tool steel um, the piece that I'll be running through it is quarter by one and a quarter flat bar see what it does you kind of just let whatever is going to happen happen and it's hard to perfect it and you just got to be pretty slow running it through but the further you get back the, the faster you can push it through and there's the fern leaf <laughs> 